Hey chemistry students, uh, let's get ready to model isotopes of an element um, in the lab candium. So what we're going to be doing in this lab um, is to use three different types of candy to model how isotopes of an element function. Remember that an isotope is an ad are atoms of the same element that vary only in their number of neutrons, and since they have a num different number of neutrons, they end up having different masses. In the modeling that we're going to be doing, we'll be using three different types of candy. Um, as you can see here, one of our isotopes of the element candium will be an M&M. &M. The second isotope of our element candium will be candy corn. And the third isotope of our element candium will be sweet tarts. So they are all candy. They are all um, representative atoms of the same element in our model, yet they all have different masses. Um, and we'll look at the data table in a second, but basically what we're going to be collecting in terms of lab data is we'll need to count the number of each type of isotope we have and measure the mass of that entire sample of each isotope. And all of the rest of the data that we'll be filling in on the data table will be calculations based on those values that we've measured. <clears throat> Um, you do have a couple of pre-lab questions here, um, and there is a hint given that those um, questions, the, the formula for those calculations are all given in the calculation section, so make sure you look over that. Um, as you set up your lab notebook, um, you're going to record uh, the data table as you see above here. So remember that we've already mentioned that we have the three different isotopes, M&Ms, candy corns, and sweet tarts. Um, this is just some sample data. Um, this is not necessarily going to look like the data that you have in class, but um, it'll be a way that we can talk about the different calculations that we're doing. So as you look at the procedure, the first thing you're going to do is count the number of each. So of all of the pieces of candy in the cup that I received as my lab group, I had 31 M&Ms, six candy corn and 16 sweet tarts for a total of 53 atoms in that sample. Next, I masked all 31 of the M&Ms. Make sure and use um, the little Dixie cup that your sample comes in um, to put on the balance so that you can eat your candy when you're done with it. And you'll probably want to spread some paper toweling out as you separate them um, because your goal is to eat the candy. Um, when you're done with that. So all 31 of the atoms of M&M together had a mass of 27.31 grams. And then you can see that the total sample of candy corn and the total sample of sweet tarts was masked as well. Um, so these, this is the only data that we're actually collecting in lab. Everything else is a calculation based on that data. So let's look at those calculations. Um, the first thing we're going to do is calculate the average mass of each atom. And um, you already wrote that formula in your pre-lab. We're going to divide the total mass of the sample by the number of atoms of that isotope. And putting units on there really helps me keep that straight. I had a total sample mass of M&Ms of 27.31 grams, and if there were 31 um, atoms of that, that means that each atom had a mass of 0.88 grams in my example. So I can go ahead and calculate the average mass for all three of my isotopes. Next, we want to calculate the relative abundance of each isotope. Um, our relative abundances are going to total one, or when you look at my data table here, depending on how I'm rounding, I, mean, I should get super close um, to the number one for my relative abundances. So relative abundances um, out of a unit of one whole, what portion um, of my sample is represented um, out of the total sample size? So since we had a total of 53 atoms altogether, and 31 of those atoms were M&Ms. 31 atoms divided by 53 total atoms is a relative abundance of 0.5849. The percent abundance, um, which is the line just above it here, is simply taking that relative abundance times 100. So whereas relative abundances should total 1 or close to 1, my percent abundances should total 100 or very close to 100. Next, we're going to calculate the relative mass contribution of each isotope. 
So what we're going to do is say of all of the atoms of M&Ms that I have, of all of one type of atom, taking into account how much each of the, the mass of each of those atoms, how much did this isotope contribute to the average mass of all three of these put together? In other words, I don't want to just take these three average masses and add them up and divide by three. That's a typical regular average, but we want to do um, sort of a scaled or weighed average. That's what atomic mass is. In this weighed average, we take the average mass of the item, but we factor in how abundant it was. In other words, if I have one isotope that's much more abundant than the other, I want to weigh its mass more heavily in coming up with an average. So the mass contribution um, is taking into account the average mass of each isotope times its relative abundance to get its mass contribution in grams. And then finally, the um, calculated weighed mass of all those particles is simply adding together my three um, relative masses or my three mass contributions. This right here is listed as calculation number five because all I had to do was add those three together. Remember that we did not get the mass average by just adding those three numbers and dividing them by three. We took its average mass and accounted for its relative abundance as well. And since this isotope was most abundant, we are going to weigh its average mass more heavily in coming up with our average mass.